April 17, 2013. An enormous explosion rocked the city of West Texas when 30 tons of fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate detonated at the West Fertilizer Company. The blast killed 15 people and injured hundreds more. Nearby homes and businesses were severely damaged, many beyond repair. The Chemical Safety Board launched an investigation and found poor hazard awareness, the proximity of the facility to nearby homes and businesses, inadequate emergency planning, and limited regulatory oversight all led to the severity of the accident. This was one of the most destructive explosions ever investigated by the CSB. Our safety recommendations address steps that should be taken at all levels to help prevent a similar tragedy in the future. The West Fertilizer Company was a fertilizer retail and distribution facility in West Texas, 80 miles south of Dallas. There, ammonium nitrate and other chemicals used as fertilizers were stored in a 12,000 square foot building that was constructed of combustible material, mostly wood. The fertilizer storage building was located close to several houses, an apartment complex, two schools, a city park, and a nursing home. Inside the fertilizer building, seeds and other materials were stored in rooms throughout the structure. Various types of dried fertilizer and additives for blending were stored in large bins. There was a stockpile of 40 to 60 tons of ammonium nitrate stored between two bins on the night of the incident. The main bin contained about 30 tons. Fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate is stable under normal conditions, but can violently detonate when exposed to contaminants in a fire. Sometime before 7.30 p.m. on April 17, 2013, a fire started in the fertilizer building. Although there were numerous combustible products inside, the CSB was unable to determine the source of ignition or exactly where in the building the fire began. One of the first responders to the incident was a police officer from the city of West who was on routine patrol near the city park. A young man approached him and pointed to the fertilizer plant. The police officer drove to the north end of the plant and observed orange-red flames coming from the building. He notified dispatch that the fire was structural. The West Volunteer Fire Department soon arrived on the scene with two engines, two brush trucks, and a water tender truck. But inside the building, the fire continued to quickly escalate. Smoke and soot from the fire accumulated on the piles of ammonium nitrate stored in their combustible wooden bins. At approximately 7.45 p.m., the character of the fire changed, most likely due to an opening low in the building, possibly when the fire burned through doors to what was known as the seed room. More outside oxygen rushed in, increasing the amount of radiant heat inside the fertilizer building. The heat was absorbed by the layer of soot on top of the pile of ammonium nitrate, rapidly heating the surface of the fertilizer and making it sensitive to detonation. Outside, the West Volunteer Fire Department sought to extinguish the flames with water. One and a half inch hoses directed water through sliding doors to the seed room. Other firefighters were in the process of connecting a four inch hose to a fire hydrant that was more than a quarter mile away. As the fire grew, the fire chief and assistant fire chief began to discuss whether to withdraw, but it was too late. At 7.51 p.m., 20 minutes after the fire was first reported, approximately 30 tons of the stored ammonium nitrate detonated, causing a massive explosion. Maybe actually, oh yeah. Twelve emergency responders and three members of the public died as a result of the explosion. Over 260 people were injured. West Fertilizer was completely destroyed. More than 150 nearby homes and businesses were damaged, some beyond repair. There was hundreds of millions of dollars of loss in the city of West.
The physical destruction we encountered when our team deployed to this accident was overwhelming. And we found it was due to the fact that over the years, there were no zoning restrictions that prevented residences, schools, and businesses from being built so close to our highly hazardous chemical storage facility. West Fertilizer was built in open fields in 1961. In the following years, the city of West slowly and steadily grew toward the facility. And despite the potential hazards of the chemicals stored at West Fertilizer, zoning ordinances did not restrict encroachment by homes or other buildings. Eventually, city buildings were constructed closer and closer to the facility. There are over 1,300 facilities across the country that store fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate. But the CSB found that there are currently no federal requirements addressing the siting of chemical facilities near residential areas, schools, or hospitals. Texas has no regulation relating to siting hazardous facilities near communities. Zoning and hazardous facility siting is addressed on a county or local level, if at all. We found that as the city of West crept closer and closer to the facility, the surrounding community was not made aware of the serious explosion hazard in their midst. And the West Fertilizer Company underestimated the danger of storing fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate in ordinary combustible structures. The CSB found that this widespread lack of awareness was due to several factors. At the time of the incident, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, did not include ammonium nitrate on its list of highly hazardous chemicals, toxics, and reactives within the process safety management standard. Yet characteristics of the chemical should have triggered its inclusion. This meant ammonium nitrate stored at West Fertilizer was not subject to safety management requirements that could have identified and mitigated the explosion hazard. And OSHA's Explosives and Blasting Agent Standard which does address the safe handling of ammonium nitrate, was not very well known in the fertilizer industry. That was due in part to the fact that OSHA rarely cited violations of this standard at fertilizer facilities. The CSB further determined that the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, does not include ammonium nitrate on the list of chemicals covered by its risk management program. As a result, the West Fertilizer Company was not required to conduct hazard reviews or to analyze the possible consequences of an explosion to surrounding neighborhoods. The CSB believes that OSHA and the EPA should strengthen their regulations to protect the public from hazards posed by fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate. In its final report, the CSB recommended that OSHA add fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate to the process safety management list of highly hazardous chemicals, toxics, and reactives, or update the explosives and blasting agent standard to ensure safer handling of the chemical. And in the interim, the CSB recommended that OSHA issue a regional emphasis program to enforce existing requirements for ammonium nitrate in regions where facilities similar to West Fertilizer are common. And the CSB recommended that the EPA revise its risk management program rule to include fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate on its list of regulated substances. During its investigation, the CSB learned that the West facility was subject to EPA's risk management program rules for anhydrous ammonia, which was stored as liquid in on-site tanks. Company employees and emergency responders demonstrated a far greater awareness of the hazards of anhydrous ammonia than those of ammonium nitrate. Members of the West Volunteer Fire Department were well aware that anhydrous ammonia could potentially take the form of a toxic cloud, able to drift into nearby homes. But the firefighters did not anticipate the potential for an explosion of the fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate. The CSB also learned that the West Volunteer Fire Department was not required to perform pre-incident planning for an ammonium nitrate-related emergency. This planning would have enabled them to determine the hazards of all of the materials on site and may have helped them develop a strategy for responding to an ammonium nitrate fire, including allowing the fertilizer building to burn to the ground if doing so would protect lives. Without knowledge of the explosion hazards posed by ammonium nitrate and a plan 
for how to respond to a fire involving the chemical, the emergency responders at West simply did not have enough time to critically assess the situation before the explosion occurred. The CSB investigation revealed that there are no standard hazardous materials training requirements across the nation for volunteer firefighters. And in Texas, volunteer firefighters are not required to receive even a minimum level of training on responding to fires involving hazardous chemicals. Of the firefighters who died, only two had received the training. The CSB also found that lessons learned from previous incidents involving fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate were not effectively communicated to emergency responders in other communities. As a result, the CSB recommended that the EPA develop a guidance document that addresses how emergency responders should use knowledge of hazardous chemicals to develop safety training, practice drills, and emergency plans. And finally, the CSB recommended that various stakeholders increase funding for training programs for fire departments on how to respond to fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate and other hazardous materials fires. The CSB is determined that no one else be killed or injured because of a lack of awareness of the risk of exposure to hazardous chemicals in their communities. We believe our safety recommendations and the lessons learned from this incident can help prevent disasters like the one in West Texas. For more information about the CSB's West Fertilizer Company investigation, please visit csb.gov.